What's up guys, Josh here from Comic Concepts coming at you with a brand new statue unboxing and review. Now this one comes from us from our good friends at Pure Arts and this is going to be the Animus Altair. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. Now a couple things to note about this statue. He is currently shipping, we are selling, and we have a few units left. So check this description, I'm going to put a link down there. The other thing is, it is quarter scale, so just make sure you have the room for it. It's pretty standard size, but you know, make sure you got the wall space for it. Uh, final note, which is a kind of a biggie, this statue actually won Gaming Statue of the Year in 2019 at the Bee Mother Statue Awards. So I'm really excited to open this thing. I'm sure you guys are excited to see it. Let's get right into it. Just so you're aware, this is a two-tier styrofoam, meaning the top is statue pieces and the bottom is statue pieces. Just be aware when you open it. Remember, place top, top, and it's gonna say it right on the styrofoam as well. When you open this piece, just make sure you do not grab any of the blue animus effect. It will break or snap if not handled carefully. The statue also comes with something a little different than the normal statues. It'll give you your piece's addition number, and you can actually place it in certain places on the statue. We'll go over that later. Um, it also comes with a little placard here, uh, showing Animus Altair and your statue's number, which I think is really cool. It'll also come with a little card holder inside. Once you've unpacked the two wall pieces, the splatter number, the placard, and the card holder, set those aside and we're gonna get into the bottom part of the styrofoam. Now the first thing you wanna grab is the base. Um, just be careful, it's a pretty heavy piece and there is animus effect on it and you don't wanna break that. Perfect. Next up, we're gonna grab Altair's body. Now, I found the easiest way to pull him out of the styrofoam because he's pretty snug is to go behind the legs. That way you're not grabbing any of the fragile parts like the daggers or his head or literally anything that could snap. If you'll notice the peg on his left leg, that's gonna be the first point that you insert into the base. Just be really careful because it's very snug and you don't wanna accidentally slam it down into the base. On the back side of the base, you'll find two battery slots. They each hold three AA batteries and it pops right off. Don't worry, you didn't break it. Pops right off. Just remember to put the tab right back in first and then clip it closed. On the back of the base, you'll find three different cutouts. Those are for the walls. Now the first piece you're gonna place is the double pane wall. That's because if you place the single pane wall first, you risk it falling over because it actually requires the two piece panel because it has a magnet at the top. Make sure these electrical prongs are facing the back of the statue. You're just gonna place that single panel right on in. Once you've placed that single panel, you'll notice there's a gap in between the two. That's the instability I was talking about before. There's a magnet right at the top. You'll clip it right on in and it should sit flush.
The little splatter with the addition number, you can pretty much put it anywhere. It's magnetic. I put mine right here. And finally, to turn on the statue, there's a nice hidden button that's kind of painted over the rock. I actually really like that because it blends with the statue. Super easy to turn on. Now that we have everything put together and nothing broke, let's take a closer look. talk a little bit about the details on the base. I think the team at Pure Arts really nailed it. They also really blended the animus synchronization effect well. I'm also kind of a science nerd. I love the chemical bonds that they put in. Assassin's Creed's first game with the Altair takes place in the Holy Land of Jerusalem between 1191 and 1193. And I think the design team at Pure Arts just did an incredible job capturing the architecture of that time period. Taking a closer look at Altair, you can really see the Pure Arts design team really went into detail on this piece. This is actually all hand painted. That's not real leather. That's not a real cloak around him. All that stitching is painted in and it's just amazing how real it looks. And again, you really look at this piece and all that metal, the daggers, the gauntlet, it's all painted in as well. That is not metal, that's painted. So it's just amazing how much love and care went into the design of this. This video really doesn't do it justice. It is just gorgeous in person. And I really have to give credit to the team at Pure Arts. If you're a fan of Assassin's Creed, you'll notice that his ring finger is missing. It's not broken. That's how it's supposed to be, don't worry. And the reason for that is the order actually requires you to remove your ring finger as a rite of passage so that the hidden blade doesn't harm the assassin. I just want to take a moment here to discuss the lighting on this piece. It's just incredible and it's definitely one of the biggest highlights of this statue. The transition into synchronization is so beautifully done on this piece. Look at Altair's arm, look at the wall, the design that just goes straight into the synchronization. You can still see some of the little chemical bonds in there, same with the base. It's just beautiful. Thank you so much guys for watching. Let us know what you think of this statue in the comments. Don't forget, you can pick up your own at comic-concepts.com as well as other collectibles similar to this. From all of us at Comic Concepts, we hope you have a wonderful day and keep on collecting. Perfect.